Okay, this is part two of lecture three on CPI, on uh, cytology, and we're going to focus on gynecological cytology. So with gynecological cytology, we are dealing with cervix, and um, with the cervix, we have the ectocervix here, where we've got squamous cells, and this is typically mostly what we see on a cervical smear. Then there's the endocervix up here, and then there's the endocervical uh, junction here. Um, and the reason this is important is because you get a change in cell type from squamous cells here uh, to more uh, secretory epithelium up here, and then you can get this uh, squamocolumnar junction here. And you can get some slightly unusual uh, cells on a um, cytology prep that come from this area that look like they could be suspicious, but are not. And we'll see some of those later. So this slide shows the uh, squamocolumnar junction, and on the ectocervix we have the um, squamous cells, on the endocervix we have the columnar cells or secretory cells, and then we have this transformation zone where we have a mixture of the two. And what we can find is when we look on histology we see uh, the squamous cells here on the ectocervix, and we have this more glandular appearance in secretory cells on the endocervix, and then we have this transition uh, of cells here where we get uh, a very slightly different cell type. And if any of these cell types end up on a cervical smear, they could look like transformed uh, pre-malignant cells that would normally come from the ectocervix. So, that's, so when I talk about squamous columnar junction later on, that's where those cells come from. Now you've seen some uh, images similar to this on a previous lecture. This is uh, the development of uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. So this is transition from normal uh, squamous uh, cervical, uh, cervix through to uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 1, which is low grade, uh, CIN2 and then CIN3. And on CIN3 we've got full depth of abnormal cells. Now these are abnormal because they've got a large nucleus, a large diffuse nucleus compared to your um, squamous cells, which have a very large cytoplasm and very small condensed nucleus. So these are very metabolically active. These, by the time they get up here, are out of the proliferative zone uh, and these are non-proliferative cells which will die and uh, be removed from the cervix within time. What we have in CIN1 and CIN2 are varying degrees of abnormal cells. So here you've got some cells attempting to turn into squamous cells up at the top but not really quite managing it and uh, plumes of proliferative cells much higher than you would normally see them, whereas CIN2, uh, they're much more prominent. CIN3, you've got proliferative cells all the way from the basement membrane up to the surface of the cervix. So that last slide uh, was histology from a biopsy, and we'll look at how biopsies are obtained uh, later on. Uh, this is uh, conventional cytology, um, and this is looking at liquid-based cytology compared to a conventional pap-stained uh, smear from the old days. So this is a sort of a fresh, um, very quick, very dirty sort of um, cervical prep. Now looking through this and identifying cells in there is a real art form to be able to identify. We can make out that there are large squamous cells there, but there's all of this debris. There's lots of blood in there. Uh, lots of mucus and these are really difficult to interpret so therefore the sensitivity and specificity of uh, this technology is really quite poor. In contrast this is a uh, thin prep um, liquid based cytology where we've got a red blood cell lysing buffer in there and we've seen the um, thin prep on a, the previous uh, video giving this neat little impression of cells on the microscope slide and you get beautiful uh, morphological appearance. So there are various different cytological uh, systems for getting material onto slides and both of these can be automated so you can have automated thin prep systems for example where the, the samples are loaded up into a carousel and then um, slides are automatically processed and then uh, stamped onto the slide with uh, an automated either barcode or patient code on there. So much of this is now done in an automated manner where a machine uh, effectively uh, processes the samples for you and produces beautiful uh, cytology slides.
So this is normal cytology and we've got pink superficial cells. So these are the very surface cells which are expressing the keratin, so I've stained up this pink colour. We've got blue intermediate cells, so they've gained that squamous morphology but are not expressing the uh, keratins in that particular cell there. And we've got a very small nucleus and a very large cytoplasm. So a low nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is what we say. We've got a very even chromatin pattern. One cell looks very similar to the next. Uh, very small oval nucleus and the presence of uh, polymorph nuclear cells uh, nuclear lymphocytes is perfectly normal on these preps. Over here we've got a cluster of squamous columnar junction from that transitional zone that I talked about earlier and these can look quite alarming as if it's a cluster of tumour cells uh, but a trained cytologist would recognise them every time as these squamous columnar junction cells. So we can have uh, the next stage is what we call mild dyscariosis. Now mild dyscariosis is what the cells look like and CIN is probably what that would look like on a tissue biopsy. So although this has come from a CIN1, just by looking at it you can't see it's a CIN1 because a CIN1 is classed as a CIN1 based upon the histological sample. Okay. So this is a histological sample of CIN1 and these are the, the sorts of abnormalities that you would see in those isolated cells from a smear from a cytology prep and we would call that mild dyscariosis. So the sorts of things we see particularly in uh, HPV infected cells are these coelocytes with a perinuclear halo. So we're looking at cells which have a fainter staining around the nucleus and that's just a feature of HPV infected cells. Uh, typically the first third of the epithelium uh, in a biopsy is abnormal which defines it as CIN1 but we're not looking at a biopsy here, we're actually looking at uh, cytology, so cells which have been scraped off the cervix. Now what we would typically do for here is uh, go down HPV triage, so human papillomavirus triage and we'd be looking at if we see something like this we'll be uh, testing it for HPV, if it's negative you would just have a normal recall. If it's positive, you would then go for uh, colposcopy or uh, biopsy, which we'll look at later on. So here we've got cells that we would class as uh, moderate dyscariosis. So we've got a much larger nucleus, much uh, smaller cytoplasm, more irregular uh, nuclei, may be mixed in with other cells uh, such as here where we've got some, some cells which are looking more like mild dyscariosis but you've got a mixture of cells within uh, on this particular picture. On this picture you've just got a cluster of cells which are quite variable in terms of their um, nuclei. Certainly if we see these things we'll be looking at a cervical biopsy. And then we've got severe dyscariosis which would uh, in this case has been taken from a CIN3 We've got very irregular cells, very small cytoplasm, very large nucleus, lots of variation within the nuclei, uh, very sort of um, uneven chromatin. Uh, and again, these will be managed with a cervical biopsy to see whether that is CIN3 or whether it is indeed cancer. Because really, you can't be sure. You see something like this, you can't be sure it's a, a CIN3 or, um, or a cancer because the cells that you scrape off the surface may well look identical from a CIN3 and a cancer, therefore you need the cervical biopsy and that will tell you for certain whether those cells are invasive cancer or whether they are still at that CIN3 stage. And just to remind you, CIN3 you've got um, full thickness, all three thirds of the epithelium are proliferative. You can see that you've got large uh, nuclei here, whereas these are proliferative cells, these are not these are proliferative, these are not. If it was cancer you'd only be able to see on a biopsy uh, and you would see that these cells have invaded down in through the basement membrane into the mesenchyme but by just taking some cells off the surface here you cannot see what is going on here so this is why cytology in effect cannot diagnose cervical cancer. Uh, cytology is used to then flag that patient up for a biopsy and it's that biopsy that can then confirm whether it is a pre-malignant lesion 
or a malignant, malignant lesion which has invaded into the mesenchyme. So I mentioned uh, colposcopy earlier. Uh, so if patients are uh, CIN1 or uh, CIN2 or 3, uh, certainly a colposcopy would be performed, but also a HPV positive CIN1s would also be performed. And basically what we're doing is um, using sort of fairly low uh, um, magnification microscopy, uh, applying an acetic acid solution to the cervix, and abnormalities tend to turn white, and then where you can see regions of white or cleary lesions, uh, so uh, progression from low grade to high grade to cancer, uh, the most suspicious regions can then be uh, biopsied, and those biopsies can then go for histological assessment. Uh, if thought to be localized, then uh, this large loop excision of the transformation zone uh, can be performed, so it's basically a, a heated uh, loop which can remove uh, the affected cells. There's also a cryo, cryo ablation which is also possible. However, if the sample is uh, confirmed to be invasive cancer, then much more invasive surgery is typically performed. Okay, so that summarizes the gynecological cytology uh, part of the lecture, and then in future lectures you will hear more about the molecular tests that are done. I mentioned on a previous slide that HPV positivity is formed. HPV is the virus that causes cervical cancer and we can detect HPV using either PCR or hybrid capture uh, and those technologies will be explained in a subsequent session.